GT Countdown. Top 10 Fallen Angels. The higher a video game franchise climbs, the farther it has to fall. And while some players may still wait with bated breath for new releases in the following series, they are in the growing minority. These IPs used to be the trendsetters, rule breakers, and games that made other developers jealous. Now most of them are either going through the motions, trying to find a new footing, or have just completely flown the coop. Number 10. Ratchet and Clank. The first couple Ratchet and Clank games were straight up technical marvels, pushing the PlayStation 2 to its limits. They represented one of the first successful takes on the action platformer. With some of the most creative weapons and power-ups in the industry, the series quickly built a huge following. But in the HD era, it's had difficulty breaking new ground, instead setting into a predictable formula. Even so, the games were still solid up until Insomniac decided to do the same thing it did with the Spyro series and hand it over to other developers. The result was the buggy, mediocre, co-op-based all-for-one, driving the first nail into the RNC coffin. Number 9. Final Fantasy. During the 90s, Square was the king of RPGs, and the biggest powerhouse in the genre was Final Fantasy. The brand remained a force through the PS2 era, but then it hit a snag when the HD generation arrived. The highly anticipated Final Fantasy XIII fell well short of expectations after being in development for nearly six years. Final Fantasy XIV was a colossal failure that still has the company reeling, and we haven't seen any sign of its upcoming project versus XIII in over a year. The name Final Fantasy doesn't mean what it used to, and unless Square Enix gets its act together fast, the franchise might never return to its former glory. Number 8. Bomberman. The classic white bomber should know a thing or two about dealing with duds, but there's no excuse for him to be not as relevant to today's multiplayer happy market as a franchise like Castlevania or Kirby. Since 1983, he and his grid mates have been lighting up screens in over 60 games, so it's not like he's gone into hiding, but the abysmal Bomberman Act Zero from 2006 ended up being a fatal blow to the series. Once synonymous with good times playing games with friends, now the poor guy is nothing but a scorch mark of his former self. Number 7. Splinter Cell. As an agent for the secretive government agency Third Echelon, Sam Fisher was once a name players would bring up in conversations about deep protagonists that they actually cared about. Up until its latest release, the Splinter Cell series called upon players to acrobatically make use of their surroundings while sticking to shadows and patiently stalking patrols until opportunity called to get in close for the takedown. While 2010's Conviction was by no means a bad game, the shift in focus to a more action-oriented game has essentially robbed it of what used to make it unique. No longer about stealth, now the franchise is just a sticker placed on the latest third-person shooting technology that Ubisoft can come up with. Once a real contender to take down the Metal Gear Solid franchise as the stealth action game of choice, we're skeptical that the series will ever return to its more dignified roots. Number 6. Duke Nukem. The Duke has certainly never been private about his exploits, but nowadays he's become a hard man to trust. Any franchise is just asking for trouble by making its fanbase wait over a decade for some love, but no extended vacation could have softened the blow that was forever. Followers didn't even want a groundbreaking Duke game, they just wanted some Duke, and they couldn't even get that without multiple developers attempting to revive it. The odds of him ever being called into duty again are about as good as a real-life alien invasion. Duke started out making fun of other shooters, and now the joke's on him. Number 5. Prince of Persia. The 
Prince has already stared down this precipice. At the turn of the century, mostly PC owners had experienced his perilous adventures when the series got a magical reboot that literally turned the clock back on Jordan Mechner's creation. This built a trilogy that had its ups and downs, but pushed the series into mainstream status, enough to get a few unscheduled sequels including another reimagining and a feature film. The problem is that all this glowing attention muddled the original series' direction, and now it feels lost in creative limbo. With Ubisoft moving its climbing and killing to Assassin's Creed, the Prince might be sitting around collecting dust for a while. Number 4 Crash Bandicoot This PlayStation darling created by Uncharted and Last of Us developer Naughty Dog in 1996 was one of the smartasses that brought platforming kicking and screaming into the third dimension. Once a mascot for Sony's platform, Crash Bandicoot has since moved on to every major console, only to come to a screeching halt in 2010. After a string of sequels including party and cart games, this mischievous marsupial hasn't been able to break into this generation no matter who he yelled at through a megaphone. While Spyro and Twisted Metal are still making the rounds, Crash has gone headfirst into obscurity. Number 3 Tony Hawk's Pro Skater Some would argue that the first three Tony Hawk games were some of the best sports releases of all time. Like many franchises, it eventually ran out of steam as the iterations piled up. Feature bloat, complexity, and a lack of new ideas eventually forced Activision to do something radical and release a skateboard peripheral for Tony Hawk Ride. It didn't work. An equally horrible sequel was released, and the series effectively committed suicide. An HD mashup of the first two games was released for download as the final sign that this once mighty franchise has finally ground to a halt. Number 2 Silent Hill Once held as a pillar of survival horror, the original Silent Hill games envelop you in a sense of dread that sinks in like the damp fog that covers the town, even before you meet Pyramid Head and Faceless Nurses. The series first stumbled with Silent Hill 4, which emphasized clumsy combat and tedious inventory management. Konami then began outsourcing the franchise, and aside from 2009's shattered memories, these entries have only been uninspired imitations, with a threatening mood replaced by disposable enemies, awkward controls, and technical mediocrity. These days, the biggest fear in Silent Hill is the prospect that the next game might be worse than the last. Number 1 Sonic the Hedgehog We honestly didn't pick the theme of this list just to pick on Sonic some more. It wasn't until we began debating the topic that we realized that our old blue friend had once again found himself at the top of a ranking no game wants to win. It certainly isn't for a lack of trying, but Sega has done some remarkably confusing things with Sonic that have left anyone outside of his most loyal, eternally forgiving fans leaving the blue hedgehog in the dust. At one point in time, Sonic's games were every bit as important as Mario's. He stood as the second most recognizable gaming character for decades and was the face of the juggernaut that used to be Sega. But countless underwhelming releases and an inability to make the transition to 3D with style has knocked Sonic from his once lofty perch. How did this happen? 